Let's see what this decal 65.95 can do. Now, I'll take those yields. Take them all day long. Not bad for 38 inch rows. Yeah, it, it ain't taking very long to fill my to fill my bin up back there. That's for dang sure. person that loses all of their sunglasses and then finds them <laughs> I legit looked for these the other day for um, about five hours and they were in this tractor so uh, welcome to harvest <laughs> update on what I've been doing for the past six weeks. Uh, Carter started a new school and because it is a private school we have to take him to school and pick him up every day. He is playing basketball and he has 6 a.m. basketball practices Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I'm up at 5.15. Then he has to be picked up at school anywhere between 3.30 and 5 o'clock. He stays after for tutoring or basketball. And then uh, for an entire week in August, I was um, helping my sister. My parents went down to Florida. They had to go down there for insurance purposes and to see the condo and how far they've gotten. So I had to stay a week with her. For the past two and a half months, I've been going through um, some very scary and uncertain health problems that they have not pinpointed yet. And we're just not ready to talk about it until they can definitely say what's going on. But um, if it's one way, it will definitely affect this whole family and this farm. So we're really hoping it's the other way. Uh, so just realize if I'm not on this camera, I'm dealing with a lot right now. And um, I'm just trying to keep my, my crap together. <laughs> so, uh, and keep busy. It's it's kind of eh, not great timing but what you're gonna do and before you even write this comment no changing my diet cannot fix this only an intervention from god and lots of praying can fix this and specialty doctors and lots and lots of doctor visits so we'll just squash that right there it has nothing to do with my diet um i have a fantastic diet i live very healthy but Sometimes you can't stop certain things. So uh, I'm gonna try and keep a smile on my face. Just get through every day <laughs> without wanting to break down, cry, and go crawl in a corner. So just, uh, just pray for good, good things to happen because um, but we're gonna keep the faith. It'll be, it'll be good and it's always in God's hands. So in the meantime, I have a great distraction, which is harvest. And um, chasing this guy around the field. I'm hoping I get to drive soon. Uh, I do like cutting corn, it's, um, it's easy. And uh, you just follow the road, so. Also, to the gentleman that came up to me at the Farm Progress Show to give me some advice that um, I need to spruce myself up a bit by doing my hair and makeup and choose better clothing this is as best as you get. Ah, uh, I love people. I really do. I know it's 2023 and people have zero filter left in their bodies. But just because you see a few clips in a 20 minute video does not give you the right to really walk up to somebody and just be, just be mean. Um, you don't know what they're battling when that camera shut off. And for the past three months, I've been going through a lot. So 
uh, just show kindness and if you have nothing productive or nice to say just don't say it and really just, just <laughs> um, find your filters that would be great please and thank you thanks for coming to my TED talk I think we finally got our losses uh, figured out. I had to get back there and manually open up the seams a little bit farther than what I would like. So when they kind of close, settle back down, get some weight on them, they don't close down too far. And we about cut out, we, we about cut all of our losses out. Hey, ever since I did that, our, our yields have just gone up. Uh oh. Got some cab corn there. I think we got a lot of cab corn there. I tell you what, it sure is nice to ha have some cab corn. We, we didn't get any last year, but uh, we're getting plenty of it this year. I'm telling you what, it seems like I just, I'm just making a few rounds and, <laughs> and sending Andy off with another load. Let's see what this farm doing overall. It's showing me 160 bushels an acre, uh, a little bit less field average than what I was expecting based on my crop tour, but this whole area up here that we're going to plow up, it, it was really low, about 132 bushels, but the rest of the farm has pulled it up, but even still, like I said, this is our poorest farm. It's got some of our thinnest soils, especially around the edges, but you, know, you get away from the edges, get in decent spots, it's, uh, you know, 210 to 250 all the way through there, looking real good. So if 160 is going to be our, our worst average, with with only hopes of going up from there that's looking pretty good well it only took me three truckloads to realize that the 50 degree day was not going to last all day now that it's about 82 degrees out here i decided to break out the old short sleeve my new gleaner shirt for my 100th anniversary but our, our moisture's been around 18, low 18s to, uh, I mean high 18s to low 20s all day. So. Lower battery back out when you uh, make your next trip. Yes, I can. And uh, those three doors on turn three that are shut. And the uh, grand total bushels for Ferguson was 14,000. 
You say 14,170? That's good. 0.57. Well, my monitor was showing uh, 14,191 wet bushels, so I'd say, I'd say she's dialed in. Uh, convert that to dry bushels. That's about uh, 13,413 bushels. Give us an average yield about 160 on that farm. Uh, not too shabby for our first farm and hopefully our worst farm. Oh yeah, that's, that's looking pretty decent for first bed and one to it. You'll probably be swapping over to bin four before you know it. Sure, I hope so. Well, that's good to know. We got this yield monitor dial, dialed in. I mean, 20 bushels. I mean, that. I mean that's accurate to way less than 1%. So that's, that's dialed in. I tell y'all something that I've uh, I'm noticing this uh, corn harvest and I've already noticed it in my cotton fields. We're getting a bad, bad grass issue. Jungle rice slash barnyard grass and Johnson grass, and especially around the edges. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but I mean it's almost solid green. All that's Johnson grass. But other parts of the field got that barnyard grass and I really noticed it in my cotton crop this year. I mean, we've been fighting it all year. I had to spray another application of Roundup and Clethodem in my cotton crop, mainly around the edges to try and clean it up. And I don't know where it's come from because before this year, I, I mean, we, we say, you see scattered, a, a little bit scattered and some Johnson grass scattered, but Nothing like we've seen this year. I don't know if our pre-emerges have uh, played out or what. I know on cotton, this is the first year, well, what we didn't use, this is the first year that we didn't use dual over our entire crop because we are worried about the leaf burn. But where we did apply the, the dual and got the leaf burn, we had a whole lot better grass control and dual is primarily a grass herbicide, even though I thought it had really lost a lot of its efficacy the last few years. And in corn, we haven't been using dual for several years now. We've been using uh, Resolve, which is a uh, rim sulfuron, which is a real good, good grass herbicide, but it's not cutting it on uh, Johnson grass and barnyard grass. We might not have to make some changes to our uh, herbicide program for, for next year, because I ain't happy. I do know in our corn, uh, I, play, I sprayed a little bit of Roundup. It was... Uh, uh, right there uh, before tassel and according to yield monitor you can tell about tell exactly where I sprayed it there was definitely some uh, yield loss and when I was uh, scouting crops I noticed I uh, had several deformed ears and there's something about that surfactant right there around pollination that that screws up the corn uh, ear I don't really know what it is but so we've seen it in fungicides that have included a surfactant in the past and also with Roundup. I don't know if we just want to start uh, applying another shot of Roundup around the edges and bad spots earlier in the year when we really don't have time to or what, but you look all out through there, look at, you see all that grass? I mean, there's there's a good bit of it. We definitely gonna have some problems the next year with, uh, with this cotton crop. We probably gonna have to make, go ahead and pencil in an extra you know herbicide application or two to try and clean some of this grass up well reckon it's a, getting close to time to call it another day this corn st started getting pretty dang damp and uh and it's just not feeding into the header quite as good so before we stop anything up or tear anything up reckon we'll call it a day we had a man we had a heck of a day according to my bushel counter we had we had over a 12,000 bushel a day. They've been pumping out trucks left and right, and that's even me taking a good bit of time trying to uh, get my losses down this morning. So 
we made it down here to a real good bottom and uh, we can't hardly go no distance at all. We're loaded up. We pretty much gotten uh, all of our worst corn out. Uh, the first, uh, the, the Ferguson farm and then the first half of the Keeley farm, just real thin hill ground, not really meant for corn, even though it made good corn this year. So from here on out, expecting big things. So after I fill, fill the combine up, reckon I'm going to carry this up here, dump and blow her off and get ready for another long day tomorrow. early start this morning had a heavy dew but it's dried up about 9 30 and we getting after it uh got andy temporarily on the grain car kelly had to run into town and pick up uh pick up some prescription medicine so she'll be back out here in a little bit but we're gonna see uh we're gonna see if we can top uh yesterday's 12,000 or so bushels don't know if we'll be able to because we got about uh, 20 acres left on this farm, 18 acres across the tree line, and then we got to take off the head and change farm. So we got our best corn yet, though, down here, down here in real nice bottom, and uh, those bushels are going in the tank. Even right here where we're missing two rows because of a mysterious disease called uh, sprayer blight, Still over 200. See where some of it got got run over, taking top end off of it. Funny thing is, we're about uh, two full days into harvest. Even though we've been working four days, so two of the two of those were half days. We've already shelled over half as much corn as we had all last season. And we still got a long ways to go, a real long ways. Really helping make up for that, uh, my uh, piss poor job of uh, marketing the crop this year. So, I mean, we we got half a round, green tank full. Man, that's a good feeling. And he getting his first uh, taste of unloading on the go with us. A little too close there. Still too close. We about had an accident. We're going. We done done the inroads, and uh, they, we got into the straight roads. And he thought we were still doing the inroads and went to make a curve and just started to get the header into the tire before we uh, both stopped. Luckily, uh, didn't do any kind of damage. I think she's full there. All right, if uh, Kelly's back, just go ahead and haul this load. If she's not back, come back and get uh, another load off the combine. Mighty good problem to have right here. Hurry up and wait. Now, I think I see Kelly's car up there, so uh, she can hop on the grain buggy and then you can go ahead and start hauling here. You don't know how I know I'm full when I lose GPS signal. All right, I want to point something out to y'all. You see right over here in the unshelled corn, you see all that green uh, up in the tops. And then right here, you see there's still a good bit of green up in the tops. 
look right here there is no green in the tops that corn is uh completely dead and what happened is uh, when i was spraying fungicide you now i come around my in rows right here and this is about to where my the end of my boom reached and then while i was finishing up the field i made another pass down this way and this green right here you can pretty much tell it to the row that's where my boom reached and all i had was about seven rows out here just here in this corner and it just didn't make sense for me to uh run down corn when i was you know turning around on the ends to come back and just get this little stretch and that just goes to show you what a fungicide does uh, especially with southern southern rust uh southern rust is you know pretty much the main disease that uh, terminated it a little bit early while it definitely kept all of this real green now again a fungicide won't necessarily pay every year you know we saw it last year we didn't spray a fungicide because we were in the midst of an extreme drought and it just wouldn't made sense to spend that 15 16 17 dollars an acre because we never would have gotten it back but uh for the majority of the time as long as you got at least fair to average growing conditions i think i really think a fungicide will uh, help off is will help out especially when you got an airborne disease that can move up into your area like we do with southern rust uh, southern rust is by far the biggest uh, yield limiting disease that we've got to face but you know there's other diseases uh, too that uh, will also contribute to yield loss even if they're not as great as southern rust but you put two or three potential diseases in uh, low concentration in your field you know add them together you know it's kind of like having a strip throat and a common cold and uh you know something else going on in your body you, you know you just don't feel good and you're not you're not very productive all right another farm down that's uh about 140 acres we're into uh yield on this one was better just like i thought right there uh, a little over 170. About, 10 12 bushels better than the last farm and expect things to go up from from here so we got about 18 acres left of our 65.95 and uh then we'll be moving on to a, a different variety one i've really got a uh, big hopes for decal 67.44 Well, I just got done uh, with this uh, big patch of uh, three farms right here and time to hit the road, move on to the next one. But first, we're going to make a stop by the uh, shop. We got a potential issue going on with a grain buggy right there. So I'll show you what's going on when we get there. All right, what we got going on here is uh, noticed. Let's see, look on this side first. All right, see how much of a gap we got in between the uh, tire and the buggy here. And then over here on this side, uh, uh, we hardly got any gap at all. And in fact, if you can, I don't know if you can tell, it's like the tire's actually gotten into the side, rubbed the paint off, so. Yeah, we're going to pull the hub off and we want to pull that load cell out because we don't want to risk damaging that, that load cell there. <laughs> 